Hello everyone, it's Mel Prajan. Today I am going to read S5, 50, 60, Juni B. Jones is a party animal. Chapter 5, going to the ball. Uh, Rossi was just sitting in the middle. She whispered real quiet to me and that grace. Back for my puddle, she said. Promised, remember, you promised to back for my puddle. Me and that grace looked and looked at each other because we didn't actually want to do that particular thing. Lucy old poked us, come on, you promised. She whispered, you promised to beg. I did a sigh, then I think and think about what to say. Finally, I took a, a deep breath. Hey, Nana, guess what? Lucille wants a poodle, apparently, and so could you buy her one? Do you think I asked? Yes. Could you? Ask that Grace, because she's making us beg you, or else we cannot spend the night. Nana's mouth came all the way open. Oh, so that's what this is all about, huh? Well, my granddaughter knows perfectly well that I'm allergic to dog. So you can tell Lucille that a poodle is out of the question, I'm afraid. I patted Lucille, very understanding. A poodle is out of the question, we are afraid, I said. Lucille kicked her feet up and down. Back harder, she whispered. You have to back harder, I did a frown. Are you firm on that, Nana? I asked. No poodle, Lucille, said the Nana, very snappish. Does she kick the feet some more? I knew that dumb idea wouldn't work, she grouched. Just then the car stopped in front of a big iron gate. Gracie's eyes opened the big and wide. Wow, this gate looks like a castle gate, she said. Lucille smiled a teeny bit. It's not a castle gate, you silly head. Grace, she said, this is the gate to my house. Nana pushed the button and the gate opened right in front of our eyes. Hey, that button is like magic, I said. Lucille smiled bigger. After the Nana drove down a long driveway, she stopped in front of a big, beautiful house. Lucille jumped out of the car and ran inside. Me and the Grace followed after her. Guess what? Lucille's house was even beautifuler on the inside than it was on the outside. There was a beautiful long row of stairs and a beautiful big bowl of flowers and a beautiful giant sparkly ceiling, light made out of glass. I did a gasp at that glistening thing, that light takes my breath breathing away, I said. Lucy skipped all around in a circle. She sang the loud song in her ear. See, see, I told you I was rich. See, see, I told you I was rich, she sang. She made that song up, I believe. After that, she took her hands, showed us all the rooms in her house. She showed us the living room, dining room, kitchen, Big giant patio, daddy's office, and the mother's office, and the family room, the pool room where you play pool, and the outside pool where you swim, and the hot tub, and the library, and the gym, and the nana's room, and the mother and daddy's room, and the fancy gold bathroom with the jacuzzi, and the brother's room, and a whole, whole bunch of guest rooms. Then finally, Lucido showed us her very own bedroom, and it looked like a bedroom where a Princess lived. Lucille's bed had a pink frilly roof on top of it. This is, that is called a canopy, she explained. It, march, it matches my pink silk draperies and my pink silk bedspread and my pink t telephone and my plush pink rug, my wallpaper with pink flowers in it and see my TV and my stereo and my computer and my CD player. She pointed to the corner, and did you notice all of my big stuffed animals standing over there? She asked. My eyes popped out at those giant guys. The giraffe was bigger than me even. Me and that Grace ran to play with them. No, stop, don't. You're not allowed to touch them. They are just for show. Huh? What? How come? Because they were expensive. That's how come. Those animals costed my nana a fortune. Oh, I said kind of disappointed. Oh, said the great. We sat down on Lucille's bed. Lucille shouted at us again. No, get up. You're not allowed to sit there. That bed spread is just for show. Me and that great spring the right off of there. Lucille quick smoothed the material with her hand. Don't you two know anything, she said. This bed spread is made out of silk, I told you. I'm not allowed to get it soiled. Oh, oh, after that, Lucille skipped over to her dresser. 
and she pressed the button on her mirror. A million bazillion lights came on. Look at this. This is my bedroom professional makeup mirror. It's the same kind of mirror that they use for movies, duh. <coughs> my dad brought it all the way from Hollywood, California. Me and the Grace run to the sparkling mirror. We looked at ourselves in the bright light. Then we sticked our out, out sticked, sticked out our tongues and made funny faces. Lucille quick turned it up. It's not a toy, she crouched. After that, me and the Grace just stood very still and we didn't touch anything. This is going to be a long evening, I said, kind of quiet. Only just then something very wonderful happened. Lucille's Nana came in the room and she was carrying a big box of dress up clothes. I thought you little girls might have fun with some of my old evening gowns, she said real nice. They are as old as the hill, but they are still quite stunning. Lucille ran to the box pretty quick. Let's play Cinderella, she said. She pulled out a beautiful sparkly pink gown. I'm Cinderella, she shouted. Then the gray shoved me out of the way, and she ran to the box too. I'm the fairy godmother, she yelled. I did a huffy breath at those two, because now I had to be the ugly stepsisters properly. I bent it down and searched through the box very careful. Then all of a sudden my hand felt something long and silky and softy. I quick pulled it out of there, then her whole face lighted up. Oh my goodness, my old feather boa, she said. Why, I haven't seen that thing in years. I danced all around with that lovely thing. I love this, Nana. I love this old feather boa. Another great idea popped in my brain. Hey, I know I'll be the famous singer that sings at Cinderella's Ball. Lucian Grace looked funny at me. What singer? There is no singer. I stamped my foot at them. I had daddy, daddy to a singer I'm here. And my name is Florence, the famous singer. And I'll be performing show tunes from the hit musical Annie. So there. Lucia and Grace shrugged their shoulders at me. Then they dressed up in their beautiful gowns. And they went to the ball. And I sang The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. Chapter 6, Bouncing. After we finished playing Cinderella, the Nana called us to dinner. Me and Lucille and the Grace skipped into the big dining room. We sat at a long, shiny table. The pretty soon Lucille's Nana came in from the kitchen and she gave us our dinner. And guess what? Its name was Beans and Frank. Hooray! Hooray for Beans and Frank, because this is my favorite kind of home cooking. The Nana did a teeny smile. Well, you usually have a cook, but I gave her the night off, she said. After that, Nana poured the milk into beautiful sparkly glasses. Ooh, Nana, these are your best crystal glasses, said Lucille, real to real. I love these expensive things. Me too. I love these expensive things too, I said. Only too bad for me because nobody even told me that crystal glasses were very heavy. So when I picked up my glass, it slipped right out of my head and it fell on the floor and broke into lots of pieces. Lucia's whole mouth came open. Oh no, you broke it. You broke my Nana's crystal glass. Nana's face was very and scrunch. Sorry, Nana. I said, sorry, I broke your crystal glass. The Nana sucked her cheeks way into her head. Oh, let's try to be more careful, shall we, dear? She said. I popped my head up and down. We shut, I said back. After I ate my beans, and Frank very careful, only pretty soon my Frank spilled off my fork, and he landed on the Nana's white tablecloth. Oh no, holler, Lucille, that's my Nana's. Good, listen, tablecloth, she brought it all the way from Ireland. The Nana's face was twisty and puffy. I quick pushed my plate away from me. My stomach felt in a tight knot. Yeah, only guess what? I'm not actually hungry anymore. And so I will just sit here and not spill anything, I think. The Nana cleaned up my messes with a wet cloth. After the finished, she finished, she brought us chocolate ice cream for dessert. Only too bad for me, cause a teeny plop of ice cream 
dropped right off my spoon and it landed on my chair cushion. Then I did a big breath. Get a bit of a bull in a china shop, aren't you, dear? She said. Sorry, Nana. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nana patted my hand. Bed is the fish. Quite all right. She said kind of mumbly after I got down from the table. And me and my friends went back to Lucille's room. And guess what? Things got funner. Lucy then we could play with the games in her closet. On account of they were, they weren't even expensive. First we played the chutes and leathers. We played twister and bingo and Chinese checkers and tic tac toe and candyland. Plus also we played let's spin till we get real dizzy, and fall down. And guess what? I didn't even break anything. I think I'm getting the hang of this party. I said very happy. So Nana knocked on Lucy's door. Time for you ladies to put your pajamas on, she told us. I danced all around the room, real happy. Hooray, hooray for pajama, because I brought my favorites. I quick put them on. See them, Nana? See how biggish and baggish they are? That's how come they feel so com comfy. So Nana's eyes looked down at me. How very charming, she said. Just then the Grace jumped right in front of me. Look at my Nana, she said. My pajamas have neon green polka daddies on them. How very colorful. All of a sudden, Lucille popped out of a big closet. Ta-da, look at me, everyone. I'm wearing my beauteous pink satin nightie. See me? See how lovely I look? I look like a gorgeous model in this thing, she said. Lucille let me and that grace feel her material. How very smoothly, I said after that. Me and Grace unrolled our sleeping bags on the floor. And the Nana took the silk bedspread off Lucille's bed. Time to get your beauty sleep, Princess. She told Lucille, then those two kissed and hugged. Good night, and the Nana shut the door. Only guess what? Lucille didn't even get in bed. She kept twirling all around in a pink satin nightgown. This is how model twirl, she said. They twirl so you can see their front and their backs. Lucille wouldn't stop twirling. See my front, see my back, she said. Me and that Grace got up on her bed to watch her twirl. Lucille's bed was soft and cushy. We bounced up there a teeny bit. Lucille stopped twirling. Hey, Dawn, she said. The bed is for beauty, sleep only. I patted her bed, very admiring. Yeah, only it's too bad we can actually play up here. Cause this mattress is a bouncy one, I said. Just then Lucy's face did a sneaky smile. Wanna bounce? She said real soft. Want to really, really bounce? She tipped it toe to her door and looked down the hall. Come on, she whispered, follow me. She grabbed the Philippe Johnny Bob and followed after Lucille and that Grace with tiptoed. We tiptoe down the hall and around the corner. Then Lucille opened the door to a big guest room. There was a giant bed in that place. See? See how huge that bed is? My Nana had it specially made in case we have tall company. Lucille quick shut the door after us. Come on, let's go, she said. And so all of us run to the big bed, speedy quick. And we jumped and jumped and jumped on that thing. I sang a joyful song. It is called jumping, jumping, jumping on the giant bed. Jumping, jumping, jumping on the giant bed. I sang, only too bad for me. Cause all of a sudden I remember something very important. And it is called the mother and daddy said no jumping. I got off the bed pretty fast. Well, only here's the problem. I said, I'm not actually allowed to jump. Because mother and daddy said no jumping, and you guys should stop jumping too, because they that would be polite of you. Didn't pay attention to me. That's how come I had to get back on the giant bed and shout in their faces, stop jumping. I said, because I'm not allowed to jump, and you guys shouldn't jump too. Grace springed way high in the air. Who's jumping? I'm not jumping. She said, she giggled very silly, I am bouncing. Then my whole face got happy. I hugged and hugged that girl, cause mother and daddy didn't say I couldn't bounce. 
After that, I bounce and bounce and bounce, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing on the giant bed till a sweat came on my head and I flopped down on the bed to rest. Flopped on a plumpery pillow. Oh, Lucy, this is the most plumpery pillow I ever, I, I ever even saw. I told her, of course it is, silly. That's because my Nana has all her pillows handmade in Sweden. I quick swinged the plumpery pil pillow over to my friend Grace. Grace, Grace, hey Grace, feel how plumpery this pillow is? Only Grace didn't actually see it coming and accidentally hit her in the head. I picked at her under that thing. Only that didn't even ha harm you. I bet, because plumpery pillows don't hurt people, right, Grace? That Grace did a teeny green. Then she took the plumpery pillow off her head and she swinged it all around and she hit me in the tummy. Oomph, I said, and I laughed and laughed. They, I was right. Plumpery pillows don't hurt people. After that, I hit Lucille in the head with my plumpery pillow. Also, I hit Grace again, then those guys got their own plumpery pillow. And all of us kept on hitting each other very fun. Only just then, a mistake happened because I didn't even know there was a rip in my plumpery pillow. So the next time I hit Grace, all of my feathers exploded out of it. There was a million bazillion of those floaty things. They filled the whole air. Practically, Lucille did a gasp. Grace did a gasp. I danced around, very giggling. Hey, it's snowing, I said. It's snowing, it's snow. Door swinged up on the very fair. It was Lucio's Nana. She saw me holding the broken plumpery pillow. My heart pounded hard inside of me. Hello, I said, very nervous. How are you today? I'm fine, except I'm having a little bit of a feather problem, apparently. Walked at me very slow. Then she took my pillow out of my hand. She hided her face in that flat thing. She didn't come out for a real long time. Chapter 7, Peeping. After a while, the Nana took us back to the seal's room. Me and Philip, Johnny Bob, got in our sleeping bags. Pretty fat and that Grace we got in her sleeping bag, too. And Lucille got into her softy bed. Now, one more peep out of you girls. I said to Nana, very grouch. Do you hear me? Not one more peep. She turned off the light and shut the door. Stayed quiet a real long time because I was scared of that woman. That's why. All of us sudden, I heard a teeny voice. Peep, he said, peep, peep, peep. It was Lucille. Me and the Grace giggled out loud at her. Peep said the grace. Peep, I said. Peep said, Philip, Johnny Bob. Then pretty soon all of us were peeping all over the place. Peep, 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 peep. Lucy kept on peeping louder and louder and louder. Peep, 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 she said. Also, she was giggling very hard. Finally, me and the grace set up in our sleeping bed. We, st we stared at that girl. Lucy is peeping out of control. Maybe she's overly tired. I said overly tired makes your brain so go silly. Peep, 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 peep. Just then Lucy's Nana opened the door again. Silence. She yelled we are scary. Shivers came on my skin. Then all of us quick crawled under our cupboards again. We closed our eyes. We didn't say another peep. Chapter in morning. Morning came very early. It was still dark outside. I jiggled Lucille. And the grace, I'm hungry, I said. Are you guys hungry? I am really, really hungry. I shook them some more. Let's eat. You want to eat? I really, really want to eat. Finally, Lucille and that grace yawned and stretched. Then all of us put on our bathrobe and our slippers, and we went down the hall to get the nana for breakfast. Lucille shake the real gentle. Wake up, Nana, she whispered. Wake up, Nana, I said, great. Wake up, Nana, I said. That's how come we had to pull her up by her arms and we turned the bright light in her face. Then Nana yawned real big. It was not pleasant. After that, she got a rope and slipper and she went downstairs with us. We sat at the Long dining room table again, then I passed out cereal bowl. 
These are the brand new china balls you bought in France. These are my favorite, said Lucille. I felt the knot in my stomach. Again, I tapped the mud on the Nana's hand. Only here's the problem. I think I would like to have a plastic cereal bowl. Because plastic is more my style. The Nana rolled her eyes way up at the ceiling. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. I don't own any plastic cereal bowls. After that, she brought in orange juice. She poured it into tiny crystal glasses. I got down from my chair, only guess what? I think I'll just stand here and not eat, or else I might spill something again. Then I looked and looked at me, then she went into the kitchen and she brought me back a banana. So I did, she said kind of nicer. I did a smile, then I ate my banana very careful, and I didn't spill a drop. Mother picked me up at nine o'clock. She came into the Nana's big, beautiful house to get me. My, what a lovely home you have here, she said to the Nana. The mother walked to the big bowl of beautiful flower and she tried to smell those lovely things. No, don't. They are just for show. Sure. Probably I hollered. After that, I said goodbye to my friend. I thanked the Nana and I quick pulled mother out of that house. Or else she might break something. That's why. I run down the steps and got in my car. Then I rubbed my hand on the back seat. It was not as soft as the Nana's back seat. I smiled, very relieved. It's good to be back. Mother dropped down the long driveway. My stomach growled and real loud. Guess what? My tummy is still hungry for breakfast because I didn't actually eat much this morning, I said. Mother left. I swear, Junibi, your stomach is a bottomless pit. Just then another great idea popped into my head. Mother, hey mother, maybe you and me can stop at Grandma Miller's for breakfast because she fixes blueberry pancakes every Sunday morning. And blueberry pancakes is my favorite breakfast in the whole entire world. Mother thinked about my offer. We ate a billion bazillion of those delicious things. Plus also I drank orange juice out of a plastic glass. Hooray, I said, hooray for plastic. Thank me. And Grandma Miller hugged and hugged. And guess what else? I think I like my regular Nana just perfect. The end.